you're watching the History Fire channel and in this video we're looking at the Battle of Rich Mountain. The Battle of Rich Mountain took place on July the 11th 1861 in Randolph County, Virginia as part of the operations in Western Virginia campaign during the American Civil War. Major General George B. McClellan assumed command of the Union forces in Western Virginia in June 1861. On June 27th, he moved his divisions from Clarksburg South against Lieutenant Colonel John Pegram's Confederates, reaching the vicinity of Rich Mountain on July the 9th. Meanwhile, Brigadier General Thomas A. Morris's Union Brigade marched from Philippi to confront Brigadier General Robert S. Garnett's command at Laurel Hill. On July the 10th and 11th, Brigadier General William Rosencrantz led a reinforced brigade by mountain path to seize the Staunton Parkersburg Turnpike in Pegram's rear. Union forces under Thomas A. Morris totaling approximately 4,000 troops, beset Confederates under General Garnett at Laurel Mountain, starting on July the 7th. After less than a week of skirmishing, Morris's force came to a standoff against Garnett's Confederate force on Laurel Hill. Occasional sniper and artillery fire plagued both sides amidst inclement weather. Stiff resistance convinced Morris he faced the main Confederate force. On July the 11th, Garnett learned on the Union flanking manoeuvre at Rich Mountain and decided to withdraw from Laurel Mountain. The 44th Virginia Infantry was ordered to hold the Bevel, Beverly Road by engaging Federals to give the appearance of an attack. With General William Rosencrantz's Union Brigade approaching from the south, Garnett abandoned the Beverly Road and withdrew toward Cap Corrick's Ford on the Cheat River, where he was killed. Union forces under the direct command of General McClellan greatly outnumbered Pegram's Confederates on Rich Mountain. Nevertheless, the Confederates held a strong position and inexperienced soldiers in his own command convinced McClellan to proceed any action with an artillery duel. A local boy named David Hart entered General William Rosencrantz's Union camp and said he knew a way round the rear of the Confederate lines, for which he was offered $100 in gold. McClellan agreed to let Hart lead Rosencrantz's brigade of 1,900 men through the woods. The route took roughly 10 hours through wet, rough terrain, which forced Rosencrantz to leave his artillery behind. During this time, Colonel Pogram was able to learn from a captured sergeant of the Union flanking movement that Pogram incor incorrectly assumed the attack was coming from the north and positioned a lone 16-pound artillery piece with most of his command in defence. Captain Julius A. D. Lang Lagnell, Garnet's chief of artillery, assumed command of this force around David Hart's family farm. At 2.30 p.m. Rosencrantz's force appeared at the pass on Rich Mountain and attacked. Confeder Confederates quickly redeployed their artillery piece and twice repulsed Union skirmishers from behind crude breastworks. Assuming they had defeated the enemy, Pegram's men began cheering. The cheering was enough to also convince McClellan that Rosencrantz had been defeated. However, most of the Union soldiers were well concealed behind trees and logs. Rose, Rosencrantz counter-attacked and routed the Confederates in his front, wounded de Lagnall. McClellan shelled the, rebe the rebel position but did not make the expected assault. Half the Confederates escaped to Beverly and on and over the Shawnee Trail. Pegram and the others, including the Sydney boys, 
a regiment formed by the students of Hampton Sydney College, attempted to make their way north to link up with Garnett. Pegram's force was too exhausted to make it, and 555 men surrendered on July the 12th. Hearing of Pegram's defeat, Garnett abandoned Laurel Hill in great disorder. The Federals pursued, and during fighting at Corrock's Fort on July the 13th, Garnett was killed. He was the first general officer to be killed in the war. On July the 22nd, McClellan was ordered to Washington, and Rosecrans assumed command of the Union forces in Western Virginia. The Union victory at Rich Mountain was met with great celebration in the North, and was instrumental in propelling McClellan to command of the Army of the Potomac. After the victory at Rich Mountain and failure of Morris to pursue the Confederate troops at Laurel Mountain, this was fast enough to catch them before crossing Shaver's Fork. McClellan severely criticised Morris in his report to Washington. If you found this video informative, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel.